This video is rated T or Tickle Me Pink. So you've decided to check out the latest escape from Tarkov White, but you're behind. What do you do? We're going to cover that. What weapons you should run, what armor you should run, what you should prioritize investing your money in and everything you need to know so you can get caught up on this Tarkov wipe. The only thing I ask is for you to smash the dislike button and tell me to kill myself in the comments down below. I just want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Before we go any farther, I actually signed a contract with them where I have boxes to give out to you guys. If you've never had HelloFresh and you live in the US, I can get you guys free food this week. Just go ahead and shoot me a message on Discord. Tell me you're interested in the HelloFresh deal. I also get paid when I give you guys free groceries. So go ahead and get in contact with me. You're doing me a favor. I'm doing you a favor. Let's continue with the video. Let's cut the bullshit and get straight into it. From levels 1 to 15, I would strongly suggest you use the highest rate of fire SMG that you can get your hands on. Things like the MP9. Any fully automatic weapon is going to be your best friend here. The MP5, anything like that, you're going to go through accuracy through volume. With the changes to armor, this wipe, SMG rounds are extremely dangerous. So not only are you going to aim for that face region and just hit him with accuracy and volume, but you're also going to try and avoid the plates. Any rounds that get past those plates, when they hit that soft armor, it's not going to stop it like it used to. It's going to do an immense amount of blunt damage. You get three rounds or so on someone's torso around their plate, and they are going to drop. If you're not sure what the armor changes were, I did a whole video in the top right right now. But basically, there are armored plates with their own hitboxes in armor now, and they will stop rounds if you hit them. So don't use something like an AKM with 650 rounds per minute and 762 FMJ. It's just not going to get you any more results than something like 9x19 Green Tracer would. Those 7.62 rounds will still get stopped by plates, they'll still bounce off helmets, they'll still net you a kill if you hit them in the face or go around the plate, sure, but so will 9x19. You'll pack much faster, you're going to be much lighter, you're going to be able to carry more loot out, move around faster, and it's just going to be a better experience for you to stick to those high rate of fire SMGs in the low, low levels. If you want the full ammo chart, you can go over to my Twitch channel and type exclamation point ammo and it'll pop it right up for you guys. As soon as you get to level 15, which should be your utmost priority, just knock out quests until you get to level 15, you will then be able to buy a plethora of items on the flea market. But I strongly suggest that you start consistently buying level 4 plates from the flea market. I would put them in a Zuck armor if you want to get them back on insurance quite often, or you can go ahead and put them in a Thor armor to get that level 3 air mid underneath it for a little bit more protection. However, you're going to be far less likely to get those back on insurance. In terms of weapons at level 15, I did a full best in slot level two traders video, which I'll have linked in the top right, but I would really bank off of 855. 556 shoots really fast. It's really accurate. You can get long range kills with it. You can get short range kills with it, and you're going to be mincing people with this round. It's basically just going to be the big brother of that nine by 19, but it's going to feel much more natural as it's a rifle cartridge. And you're, most of you probably ran an M4 much when you ran things like MP5s and Escape from Tarkov. Also with access to the flea market, I want you guys to start prioritizing any extra rubles you guys have into leveling up your hideout as fast as possible. You're significantly behind the curve on the hideout now. So all the hideout items should cost you next to nothing. They'll be giving you bonuses to your character that'll make your life easier in raid. And you're gonna be able to craft yourself a lot of your early game quest items, things like your morphines, things like your iskras, your 60 round magazines. Just keep leveling this hideout. Always have something upgrading in the hideout. It's also gonna go ahead and get you all those skill benefits too. So you level all your soft skills 50% faster by the time you finish that hideout. And I did a whole hideout video that'll be linked in the top right right now on what you should buy this wipe in the hideout. So I said invest your extra rubles into the hideout, but I don't want you guys doing any money runs. Sure, it's good to loot some things while you're going ahead and doing your quest, but don't sit there just doing money runs. The most efficient way for you to go ahead and afford to invest in your hideout, afford the kits you need to continue questing, is just scaving in to factory. Scav in on factory, go straight to the extract. You will get plenty of loot. You can hit a box or two on the way out, maybe hit the toolbox, hit the med box, something like that, and then just reset. To take you like five minutes if you have anything to do around the house this is a great time to knock this out as well whether you're doing chores homework whatever scav set a timer for you to come back and your scav is back up and just continue to evac with the gear utilize what gear you can from the scav that's actually decent like maybe armor maybe meds etc and then you can go ahead and sell things that are rare that you might spawn with for example like a labs access card or you can choose to keep 10 of them if you want to turn it in later for colleagues part three for a black key card and make a lot of money later it wouldn't be a bad choice just to go ahead and save them all up and if you truly run out of money then sure you can sell one sell two but still work towards that end game goal and you'll be making a lot of money with very minimal time invested 
the next thing you can do is just get a buddy it's gonna be massive for you if you don't have someone to play with join my discord it'll be linked in the description down below i would gladly play with you and give you guys a hand it doesn't matter there's a lot of other really cool guys in there that'll help you out but not only are they gonna be there to guard your back help you fight off enemies they're gonna toss your gear in the event that you die your insurance is gonna be much more likely to come back to you but they've also likely already gone through most of these quests they have these expensive quest keys and you won't have to sink that cost into those keys you can just continuously progress through those quests and knock them out really fast and just catch up in the levels something that will certainly help you out there's such a small tip is just always check that quest inventory out of raid so you know to turn in your quest items because we've all been there we've gone, gone and done a giant pain in the ass quest and we left that item in our quest inventory went back in and then died that is a terrible terrible thing you do not want to end up in that situation make sure you're turning your quest items in every single time i'll have a video coming out here shortly about what quests you should actually prioritize in escape from tarkov what quests are kind of dead end quests what quests you know lead to a really long quest chance and give you a lot of experience or really good rewards for example m80 from a vision lighthouse is a must do make sure you're prioritizing that task so you can get your hands on cheap and effective rifle rounds the next thing is just make sure that you are efficiently leveling up your traders with the money spent with them so try and go ahead and sell things like melee weapons and food to jaeger that you're not going to eat food that's worth a lot of money right sell your valuable items to people like therapists anything skier will buy like shotguns for example or other rifles go ahead and sell to him and then your leftover items you can go ahead and sell to mechanic obviously the extra armor ragman will generally buy and only are you going to sell these for just about as much as you can possibly get for all these items you're going to level them up efficiently you can then level Prapper up through going ahead and repairing armor with him, or maybe you need more money spent with Skier. You can repair armor with Skier or Mechanic. Let's say you need more money spent with Prapper or Therapist. You can insure with them, and that'll up your money spent as well. And when it comes to Peacekeeper, you're just going to cheese him, but this will be the most cost-effective cheese. You don't want to do this to the other traders. You're just going to go ahead and buy USD, which counts as money spent with him, spend the USD, then sell to one of the other traders to convert back to Ruble, so you can then once again get that conversion from Rubles to USD, you'll be able to get your money spent up with Peacekeeper very fast. This will save you a ton of money and get you your level two traders as fast and as cheaply as possible. The next thing is more of a mentality. I know it feels really good to go ahead and kill a player. You have loot on the ground, but if you kill a player in a really bad situation, let's say you kill him in the middle of a busy intersection on streets of Tarkov, most people run up and they go loot him and they die. If you think he might have a duo sitting around watching the body, don't jump to conclusions and be like, oh, I'm sure he ran away. Maybe you threw a grenade or maybe the grenade got him. Don't jump to conclusions like that unless he has insane loot on him and you can see that. Leave the body, continue questing, and don't take a death. That's going to save you so much time, so much money, and really get you caught up fast. If you maintain this mentality, you're going to have a much better survival rate, much better KD, and a much better time in general playing Tarkov because most people are so loot motivated. Like a dog that's food motivated. Most players in Tarkov are loot motivated and will go running to their death over loot. Speaking about loot, you do not need to go run to the best loot spots on the map before you do your quest. But the way Escape from Tarkov has changed over the years, even just looting things like duffel bags, jackets, filing cabinets, you can, as long as you're filling up your backpack, most of those items are going to be worth at least around 10,000 rubles per slot. You're going to come out with like 500k with a decent sized backpack and a rig, just looting silly little items. There's very few items in the game that aren't worth much money. Battlestate Games has done a really good job making sure every single item is utilized in crafts and barters that players want to utilize. So you'll get a feel for the prices of the items during this wipe. But for the time being, just fill up your bag, fill up your rig, and just get out with that. Make sure you're also investing in super cheap keys. Uh, I know for a lot of us, we just don't buy keys for a long time for some reason. But for example, on customs, if you have a lot of customs quests, Go ahead and buy all the custom safe key. It'll probably sink in like 100, 150k, maybe 200k to buy all these safe keys. It's going to pay for itself in a single run. Super cheap keys like that that just consistently print you money. You should make sure you grab. And I'll have a video coming out here shortly on all the priority keys I think you should have for every single map. These are going to be keys, like I said, they're just cheap. You can buy them before you go into like a big quest series of going to Shoreline. And they're going to make you a lot of money. I'm not just going to recommend keys that are worth millions and millions of rubles, but just ones that are easy to get. And will print you money that being said i would stay away from streets until you're in a position where you can die a lot many of you don't know streets for many of us it couldn't run on our previous machines at all and it's a big map it is swarmed not only with player scabs but it has a lot of players on it there's a roaming btr that is generally aggro and just guns you down the evacs are kind of hard to find if you've never played it before 
and I would just stay away from it until you actually have those quests. I, I see this like idea in Tarkov right now that you have to play streets to get the best loot. And although it does have really good loot, you can get insane loot on any map. It's just about surviving with that loot. So don't stress. Don't feel like you need to be playing streets because it's the best loot map. Some streamer told you so. The best loot map for you is just going to be the map that you consistently survive on. And that map will be different depending on what your play style is. If you're really good at spotting people and using semi-automatic weapons, that'll probably be something like Woods. If you're very comfortable with movement, running between cover, sweeping your corners, then maybe something like Customs on Dorms will be the natural suit for you. But just find that map that you can always come back to to have a good raid, get a kit, and get some loot in the event that you need to. Hopefully this video helps you get in the mindset and let you know everything you need to know to get back into this Escape from Tarkov wipe. I'll have my best level 2 trader weapons on screen right now. Make sure to use these as soon as you get level 2 traders. They are absolutely insane. Peace out. I look forward to seeing you guys all in the live stream and in the Discord. Both linked in the description. Later, guys.